happens in a father that has to be masculine and be able to move the family to the next level. Not only should the father be a father to the children, but the father really should be a father to his wife. Y'all, okay, y'all, y'all, y'all don't like that right there. Because the father, the father, the man of the house is supposed to be the prince or the priest of his house. And nothing happens without him not, y'all. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. I just talked to, I just, I just get my little Mary had a little lamb sermon because y'all don't like this. You got to know that fathers have to be some people that understand that God has to be the head of them. And if you follow a man or a father that has God in the front of him, you may not always know where he's going, but you're going to end up in the place where God wants you. Wherever God places you is a blessed place, baby. Look at your name and tell him you'll be blessed if you follow a man of God that's following God. Mm-hmm. You got some men following all kind of things. You, you got some men that's following fads and some men following trends and some men just following anybody because typically people want to be led. Uh-huh. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Most people don't want to. They ain't got enough courage to stand out and be the leader. They want to be led. Uh-huh. But if you got the right kind of father, this father can teach you some things to put some things in your spiritual toolbox so that when you come up against the wiles of the devil, you have something to stand on and fight back and tell the devil the devil is a lie. You will not have authority over anything that I have because my father, y'all ain't going to talk to me, has put something down on the inside of me that said when I get weak, I know that he's strong. Slap your neighbor high five and say you got to have the faith of the father. So now, so now there's some things that a father needs to do. There's some things that a father has to understand because a father is a real leader. God made him first. You can't get mad at God or a man because he made him first. But that's who he made first. Y'all, 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 okay, y'all don't like that lady. That's okay. He still made him first. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. He made him first. And he made him first for a reason. Because he expected him to stand up and be a protector. And be a leader. And be someone that can look out upon his family. Right. I know the enemy has tricked men and fathers sometimes because God is working two and three jobs and he can't be home with his family. That's the trick of the enemy. But if the real men would really stand up, what they would do is they'd go and get themselves some education so that they can get into the right kind of job so that they can bring home the baby and if they ain't got a pride in the pan, they'll let them know he's still the man. Y'all, y'all, y'all ain't going to talk to me today. But there was a father and brother Abraham. He says, now, I trust God. I'm going to follow God's instructions. Y'all know real fathers follow God's instructions. Mm. This is where we get hung up sometimes because people go against the opinion and, and go with the opinion of men. But I don't know about you, but I don't want somebody that's going to lead me by an opinion of somebody else. Yeah, oh, oh, God. I, oh, okay, okay. I'll tune up later. But, but I don't want nobody leading me. I don't want nobody giving me no suggestions from their own opinions. Oh, okay, okay. Y'all don't like me right here. Uh, the, the reason why I, I can't, because I look at your life and I can see what you have done. And if your life don't express to me that you where I'm trying to go, I don't need your opinion. Lord have mercy. But, but, but one thing I do know is that when I'm under the umbrella of God as a father, y'all, oh God. And, and I gotta tell you, even sometimes we, we 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 look at these situations where we have single mothers, and I understand, but sometimes single mothers even have to have qualities and characteristics of fathers. If you're the only one in place, you've got to have those kind of characteristics. And I know you can't teach a man how to be a man, or you can't teach a little girl what's gonna happen with a man, but you need to hook up with a man that you know is a godly man and oh God who be able to tell you how to uh, uh, yeah. see cause I talk to my daughter and I tell her this is what the negro oh, oh. Oh, oh, God. y'all ain't gonna talk to me up in here I, I feel like preaching but I, I, I tell her all the time I said this is what he wants you know why I know cause I was the same age and I wanted the same stuff I'm just trying to tell you, I know what they want because I've been there, done that, got a t-shirt. Yep. Yep, come on. Yep, yep. Oh, oh, I ain't talking about you, Brother Isaiah. I'm just talking about me. I, I'm telling you, I, I just want you to know that I talk to her and I tell her what they want because I know what they want. Sometimes you got to have a man in your life that you can trust. That you ain't going to be feeling on my daughter when I send them to y'all. Oh, God have mercy.
person. You ain't going to be molesting my daughter when I send her over to your house. You, you ain't going to be doing this crazy stuff because I need you to talk to her and to speak into her life and tell her what a man really was. Right. Yeah. Some of the reasons why us now, us fathers, are becoming an endangered species and we're filling up the jails and the graves is because nobody talked to us and told us the real deal. Look at somebody say, sometimes you just need real talk, real talk, real talk. Come on, tell them you need real talk, you need real talk. Real talk. Real talk. And so when you get real talk, there are some things that has to happen because now when you get real talk, it depends on what you do with the real talk. You can't get mad, my God, if somebody told you the real deal and you didn't follow the real deal. Well, You can't get mad if somebody told you what the outcome going to be and you still chose to do what you was going to do. Oh, can I talk like a father today? Lord have mercy. So then Abraham, let me get back to my story, back at Moriah. Abraham now, he gets this message from the angel of God who tells him now to take your only son. Now he knows he has two sons, but he tells him to take his only son, Isaac, and he says to him, go up to the mountain to give your only son as a sacrifice. And when I began to look at that, that showed me that it was a typology, mama, of God, because now God was the only one that I read before I talked about Abraham, that he gave his only begotten son as a sacrifice. See, now here's the thing that you got to understand that because Abraham began to think and he began to say well whatever God says is what I'm going to do. That's the problem with some people of God. They get to a point where it don't look like it's what God says. And I can't believe that God would tell me to do this. I can't believe that God would allow me to be in this kind of situation. I can't believe that God would allow me to do this. And because they're in that kind of situation, they choose not to follow God. But Abraham said no, 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 no. He said, whatever God says, that's surely what I'm going to do. And so now that Abraham, he picks up his boy, and the Bible said that he took his two young men servants, and he also saddled up an ass. Y'all ain't going to talk to me here. And the Bible said that he walked a three-day journey. Y'all, see, some people won't walk a half a day. But God said this man walked a three-day journey to give up something that he beloved. Oh, God, that's a lesson to be learned right there. Because some people won't give God that thing that they really love. That's why God can't bless you like he really want to bless you because you keep holding on to the thing that he's telling you to sacrifice and because you're not sacrificing you're not giving God everything that he asked you for then God can't bless you like you want him to bless you. Look at your neighbor and tell them you've got to learn how to have faith of a father. And so I'm getting ready to roll y'all. And so then what happens now is that he takes his boy and the Bible says that he has the wood. The wood is the stability of the sacrifice. He has the fire. The fire is the consuming fire of the sacrifice. And he has the knife. The knife is the activity of the sacrifice. And he goes up and his son says, now father, you got the wood. You, you got the knife. You got the fire. He said, but now where is the lamb? And you got to see now that Abraham in verse 5, before he went up there, he told them, he said, now y'all stay down here with the ash. And I'm going up on the mountain. Y'all and don't talk to me here. Can I give you a little tidbit right here? That when you get ready to give God what he asked you for, you got to leave some people at the bottom of the hill with the asses, and you got to go on up to the top of the hill and give God some worship with faith knowing that I'm on my way down there, y'all. Y'all ain't going to talk to me here. And so he said, let me go up here, and I'm getting ready to really praise and worship God, because God is getting ready to do something wonderful in my life. And so now his son asked him, Isaac, the beloved son, the one that he wanted, the son of the promise, the one that he waited until he was over a hundred years old to have, he said, now daddy, he said, you got the wood and you got the knife and you got the fire. He said, but where is the lamb? Now here he speaks in faith. Abraham looks back at his baby boy and I can't even imagine what Abraham was feeling. I can't even imagine on his three day journey where he was going and how he was feeling on this journey because he know I got to do what God says, but I just can't believe God is asking me to do this. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Has anybody ever been in a place where you couldn't figure out why God would ask you to do this? Why God would ask you to be in this place? Why God would ask you to tie up with this person? Why God would ask you to bless this person when that person don't even like you? Y'all ain't going to talk to me up in here. Have you ever been in a place where God is telling you to do something that you just can't believe? I need somebody to pray for me and you got me praying for other folks. I need somebody to lay their hands on 
place. When God has told you to do something, you just couldn't imagine God. Why would you tell me to do this? But I imagine here now. I imagine Abraham. He began to talk and walk with his boy. 